<coughs> we are the largest independent film and acting school in the world. Those of you who have been to our website have seen that Steven Spielberg sent his son to study with us. You also may have seen that in addition to that, he came last year as a guest speaker to New York Film Academy. Uh, the guest speaker list, if you go through it, you'll see a lot of uh, prominent directors, cinematographers, producers, actors, Glenn Close, Tom Hanks. Uh, these are people who come and speak on a regular basis at New York Film Academy. So we have a very good relationship with the industry. On our, our main website, uh, there is a lot of information about it's a little bit of an eye chart, some people say, but you'll see that we offer Master of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Associate of Fine Arts. Then we have also one and two year certificate programs. It's, the admission process for New York Film Academy is fairly simple. We have what is called open admissions. We do not require that you have studied in your chosen field prior to this. In fact, we have some students who come to us after studying medicine or law who have, have realized that uh, they've satisfied their parents' requirement that they get a degree and now they're coming to us to get the education in their area of passion. And that primarily for us is what we want. We want to work with people who are passionate. We do have financial aid for international students. So let me just say right out front, we do have that opportunity. The terms for the grant are financial need. Okay. And considering that film school is expensive, I don't know anybody who doesn't have financial need when you're considering film school. Maybe Steven Spielberg's son, I, don't, I should say. There are some people who can afford to just pay the tuition. Uh, but for the rest of us, mere mortals, um, who need to eat as well, um, we do have the grant. Now it is, you would complete the grant application only after you have completed a program application. And within that process, it's going to ask you for an essay. Now the essay for financial aid is different from what we would call your narrative statement or statement of purpose for your program application. In your program application, you want to be the best Israeli film director ever. And in your grant application, you want to say, I want to be the best, but financially, I'm one of six kids, my mother doesn't work, uh, I've got a sister who's getting married, I'm actually one of nine kids, I lied. Um, so these are the things that we need to know, the circumstances in the household that if we look at an income statement, which is also required, we wouldn't know. So you would provide financial verification information as well as an essay that sort of describes your situation and, and why. You also could express your passion, but sort of more on the side of why, why you should be considered for a grant. It is on a sliding scale. I've seen the, the least I've ever seen anybody get was $3,000. The maximum is ten. Other sources, we do accept third party funding. So if you find scholarships or grants or loans outside of those that are on our website, we do accept that kind of funding. We do have a housing coordinator at all locations, and that includes uh, year-round in Brisbane, Australia, year-round in Florence, year-round in New York, and in Los Angeles. If you're looking for locations, you'll see also on our locations page that we do workshops around the world, Paris, Florence, Lugano, we also have options in Japan, in China. All of our instruction is in English and for those of you who are looking to strengthen your, uh, your proficiency in English, whether you study English here in Israel or come to the U.S. for four weeks of intensive English, I do strongly recommend that you're confident in the language before you start to study and try to learn in it. We are probably, of the U.S., one of the most international schools in the U.S. Uh, approximately almost 50 percent of our student population are international students represented by 80 countries. So we have students from Israel studying with us, we have students from you name it, we've got them. If you go to the studenthousing.org website, Educational Housing Services is the name of the company and the residence that you are looking for is the 1760 residence. It's uh, about two blocks from Central Park and two blocks from East River Park. 
You're going to residences here in the top of the navigation and then from that Okay. 1763rd Avenue is the residence. This is a pretty cool residence. It's a very secure facility, 24 hour um, access but only by key card and through security at the front desk. Each room has a complete um, set up in terms of the bed, the dresser, chair, desk, etc. It has flat screen TV, DVR, DVD. Um, there are kitchens on every other floor if you want to cook your own meals. There's a microwave in the room, refrigerator in the room. We have the possibility for sharing with one or two students, so a double or a triple opportunity. There's a gym in the basement open 24 hours. There is a, yeah, there is a game room as well. There is a laundry room that will text you when your laundry is ready. So, Outside of the dormitory style housing though, we have students who are coming for one year or longer who want to save money. This is uh, because of all of the amenities, the gym, the laundry room, the text you, I mean, come on. It costs a little bit more than sharing an apartment with someone. Uh, so this ranges between 1500 and 2500 per month for room, uh, but we have students who are paying 500 to 1,000 by sharing an apartment or renting a room f available. I had a student living on Fifth Avenue for 500 a month. So there are ways to reduce that cost. We have, and again, the housing coordinator would, coordinator would provide that opportunity. In LA, the, the housing is across, almost across the street from the New York Film Academy. It's the Oakwood Apartments, and that's oakwood.com if you wanted to look at LA accommodation. <coughs> Internships. In, let's talk a little bit about internships. Internships in film are of very little value except in one area, and that is in producing. If you are, in fact, if you're a student in our producing program at New York Film Academy, it is a requirement that you have uh, meaningful work for you to do. If you're on the, uh, you won't be necessarily on the set in a film internship. You would be making coffee and getting copies and that sort of thing. It's uh, there are documentaries about this uh, experience that people have had with internships in film. So, what our objective is to is to train you so that when you leave us and you step foot on a set, whether it's as an actor or as a filmmaker, you know what to do and you are infinitely hireable to do that. About 75% of our student population reports that they are working or have worked. Now, no university or school can promise that after you get your education, you're gonna get a job. That's gonna be entirely up to you with how you use the education, what you do with the education. Fortunately, I think that people come to New York Film Academy because of who we are and what we do. We are the most hands-on and practical school in the world. If you come for a four-week workshop or the one-year program or a two-year program or a master's program, you will shoot your first project in your first week. In 16 weeks of study, you will have shot seven projects. You will have been in class Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 9 or, 9 or 9.30 until 6 or 6.30 in the evening. Guest speakers monthly on Wednesdays. The editing lab is open until midnight. You will check out equipment on Fridays. And over the course of a weekend, you and your classmates, because you'll be in a crew of four students, you will go out and shoot four projects over that weekend. You will come back, check in, deliver your film for processing. You'll start your editing process, screening, getting critiqued before you go into your next project. So it's very much what we call workshop-based education in that regard. Everything is building toward the next project. So starting with mise-en-scene into continuity, into montage, a semester midterm film to demonstrate the learning, going into text and subtext, improvisation in film, and then a semester film of 10 minutes. You work with the RES, you work with DVX, DVR, uh, HVX, in students who have gotten hired by directors who have been more successful than they are. Um, one of our Egyptians uh, hired a Brazilian uh, cinematographer who he studied with at New York Film Academy. Why? Because he knew his work from studying with him. So you're networking within school. You're networking without, outside of the school. For our actors, uh, that's again the same sort of thing is understanding who's doing what, when, where, and how to get yourself seen, how to get your short, how to get your show real seen. Um, 
you got to watch out for all of those things, you know, meet the casting directors, that kind of thing. People have gotten seen and hired from that, but it's rare. Um, more so, you just want to make sure that you're known as somebody who shows up time, uh, on time, prepared, ready to go. So, I, you know, I don't know what else or what more. I don't even think I could fill an hour with saying that you need to be a good student. You need to put your creativity into it. Because without that, without your passion, without everything, whether that's transferred to the screen with you being shot as the actor, you writing the script, you being the cinematographer, or you as the director, it ultimately will always come out to what's on screen. And from there, that will either open doors or will people will say, not now, or you're growing, or you're developing, or, you know, call me when you have something else. If you're a film student and you're showing at festivals, your short project, make sure that you have a feature length film in your back pocket. So that if somebody says they like this, what else have you got? You're able to reach in and say, here's, my, here's the script for my feature. Yeah. Or at least the synopsis. And you ought to be able to get that down to your 60 or 90 second elevator speech. If you find yourself in the elevator with somebody and all you have, I'm serious, serious. You may have only 90 seconds to sell somebody. And that's where you get these weird things. It's like alien meets angels in America. Uh, okay, sounds interesting. Let's meet. All classes are required. And for international students, uh, attendance is, uh, is not an option. You must be in class. If you miss a certain number of classes, I think it's 19, then you are most likely going to be asked to be dropped from the program or restart the program. Or if you're dropped, your I-20 is canceled and you have to return home.